Do you know, I never, I never actually thought about it when I was younger, thinking that, that I would become an artist. Went to school, went to university, went into architecture, and that sort of wasn't the right path after, after almost a year and a half. And then, um, and then I had my family. And I, when they were young, I sort of thought, I need to do something. And so I just started taking um, classes at the local college. And when we moved back to Vancouver, that was when I thought, I really need to, I'm going to go to Emily Carr, and they had a program there. And I, th I always think back to, you know, architecture, but I think that still informs my work, but it's not. I'm so glad I, I didn't go down that path. A lot of it is about, um, the sort of information that's available. I mean, newspapers are so ubiquitous. Everyone has access to a newspaper. Um, yet the stories within the newspaper and the stories that it tells are still selected and edited. And so I look at those and I read them and then what I do is I, I tear them to make the strips. So I'm, again, editing it, ripping it apart, twisting it, bringing it back together um, to create something new, to create like a different story as such but uh, maybe just a, a different approach to it or a different perspective and I just love twisting paper there's something about it's it's quite meditative and I think that when I started it was at a time in my life where everything was busy and chaotic with a young family and going to school full-time so it was really totally like my escape and that you know and then I could it was quiet and I could then start thinking about why I was doing what I was doing. It allows me to slow down and just focus. And a lot of times what I'm doing as I'm, as I'm twisting the paper and as I'm going through, I'm rereading the stories that have been ripped and I'll recognize an image that I've seen way back, you know, when I toured like weeks ago. And, or I will see something else that I recognize. And one time I, I was actually doing a project that was, um, I don't want to get into that, but it was it was so amazing because I was going through and it, it was it was actually a project about um, it was called Ashes to Ashes and and all the artists were asked to create um, a coffin for themselves that was like totally biodegradable and so mine was out a newspaper but going through that and using um, the newspaper I actually came across an obituary of a very good friend of mine his mother had passed away that I didn't know and it's those moments where. Um, I missed that, I didn't read it, but I could have very easily have missed that in the ripping, or like, how did that just pop up and I got to read that again? You know, and, and I think about that as a, a lot of times as we go through our day-to-day -day being, that so much is missed. And unless you're aware or open um, to things, a lot gets, we miss a lot of stuff that just goes by. And a lot of my work is about connections too, right? About it's about connecting um, to my past, and you know, and, and what I'm doing now, and how that'll lead to things in the future. And I find it's always a cycle of, uh, and that's the way my work is too. Like it, things that I started off with, I will come back to it again and revisit it. And as I revisit it, it becomes something different and new. Hi, I'm Connie Sabo, and I'm an artist.